I love emotional literature. Make it sad, make it miserable, make it depressing. Try to make me cry. I'd like to forget that I'm dead inside. And this book, Bodies of Light by Jennifer Down, might be the most emotionally nuanced novel that I have ever read. Jennifer Down's second novel, Bodies of Light, just won Australia's most prestigious literary award, the Miles Franklin Award. And it's that glorious type of miserable. Think Shuggy Bane, but gritty. Think the colour purple, but Australian. Think a little life, but with character development. Think Naked Lunch, but written by an author who had empathy. Think Jude the Obscure, but modern. That's right, I just compared this book to the one and only Thomas Hardy. So by the grace of a photograph that had inexplicably gone viral, Tony had found me, or he'd found Maggie. I had no way of knowing whether he was nuts or not, whether he might go to the cops. Maybe that sounds paranoid, but I don't think it's so ridiculous. People have gone to prison for much lesser things than accusations of child killing. I really like this hook. It makes me want to read more, but I don't feel that it represents the book very well. Read a lot of books and you'll start to see patterns. You'll start to form stereotypes. This book, it screams plot focused, probably a thriller and with paper thin characters. And that's not what this book is. It has an engaging plot, yes, but it completely skips over things that any plot focused author wouldn't skip over. Accusations of child killing. You'd think the death of the child would be a focus, but Down is interested in the character. She's already foreshadowed the child death. You've read it in the synopsis. You know what's coming. So she zooms over this event. The actual death of the child isn't even a full paragraph. But the procedure around it, the pointless CPR, the hospital, it all communicates the numbness that Maggie feels. But then Downs slows the pacing to a crawl. She lets the emotions of the situation hit Maggie. The grief, regret, doubt, guilt, questioning of herself. That this book has a good plot, that's a bonus, a delightful side salad to your delicious main. You're like some sort of psychic vampire that is going to feast on the emotions of Maggie. And as for this book being a thriller, no, this is very definitely an emotionally poignant and devastating literary fiction novel that is telling you the story of a life, of a very tragic and very sad life. Maggie only has a few questionable memories of her father and none of her mother. She was raised in the 80s and 90s in the foster system in the outer southeastern suburbs of Melbourne, moving from halfway house to foster home. This sets up so many themes that we're going to see throughout the novel as Maggie ages. Institutionalization, knowledge or lack of knowledge, love in all of its guise, intercourse and power, something that is completely different to love, intercourse and power as a separate thing to love. Maggie is the victim of abuse in this system. She is also completely unloved, unloved by anybody. And we see the consequences that this has on her personality, but they're not massive flaws. Maggie is really well adjusted considering that she has been systematically raped as a child by her carers, her teachers, and the police. She's never actually been loved, and her education has massive holes in it as a consequence of her moving so often. But these things, they don't define Maggie. They do have an effect on her. They do change her, but they don't define her. There's no navel-gazing in this novel. Maggie takes risks that some people would think are silly. She lets a man choke her until she passes out during sex on more than one occasion. And when she is accused of being needy, she leaves him without a second thought. She is anything but needy and she knows when somebody likes her and when somebody just wants to fuck her. Maggie has difficulty making friends. When she first attends university, she fails to understand how everybody already knows each other. And it's an experience that I could personally relate to. Melbourne universities are dominated by elite private schools. Anybody can attend, but it's better if you went to Melbourne Grammar, Scotch College, Xavier College, Wesley College, Brighton Grammar, Trinity Grammar, Halebury. It is such a powerfully simple example of social 
privilege. All of Maggie's relationships are fleeting. She never belongs. She moves in with a girl she thinks is cool and they become more than friends. Then she wakes up in the mental ward, unaware of why she is there and how much time has gone missing. And when she's finally better and can leave, she returns home only to find somebody else's stuff in her room. Her girlfriend needed somebody to help pay the rent. And then instead of bunking in together, she moves out. I'm going to leave the synopsis there. And it does feel like I've detailed quite a lot. Yet this isn't even the halfway point. This is like an iceberg. There is so much more under the surface that I am leaving for you to discover. There are so many moments of emotional turmoil for Maggie, but what Down does that really elevates this novel is that she's able to explain the differences in Maggie's emotions. Maggie is raped as a child. Maggie is dumped. Maggie is physically abused. Maggie's child dies. Maggie goes through quite a bit more that I haven't said, yet none of these situations feel the same. They're all strangely similar, but all completely different, and they all take their effect on Maggie's personality. Her ability to trust, to love, to open up to people. We really see Maggie change. We see her grow, but we also see her shrink, because sometimes that's what trauma does to you. This novel really sucked me in. It was quickly the only novel I was reading, and I really enjoyed the complexity of it. If, however, endings are important for you, this novel doesn't really have a great ending. It's a character portrait and they're hard books to end. That minor flaw, however, isn't enough to prevent me from giving this book a very well-deserved five stars. If you have ever loved a book because it has made you cry, because it has made you see or feel a character's grief, or just because it helped you get into your emotions, then this book is a must read. And if you like emotional books like this, then subscribe. Bye bye.